Hello, Clutter Warrior. <laughs> I am so happy to be with you today and talking about regret. I've been seeing a lot of comments on our Instagram and TikTok, partly because we were, we've been talking about sentimental objects. And so folks are, um, they are sharing their um, projected fears about regret and fear around letting things go. What if all of that projection around what if I let it go and then uh, I'll regret it in the future, this undefined future time where we're going to miss something <laughs> based on our imagination and even possibly based on something that had happened in the past. So what I offered um, a couple of the folks that I was corresponding with was this idea, and I want to talk about it here, is if you think back over your life, and you think about all of your regrets, and I would think that if you, you know, if you, if you're past puberty, <laughs> you probably have a few regrets. And if you've been on the planet for longer, you probably have more. If you think about the things that you regret the most, and then you imagine, what if I let this book go? What if I let this sweater go? What if I let this tchotchke go, right? and I regret it, if you think about it in the, on the scale of your biggest regrets in your life, where does it fall, right? I mean, in my life, the things that I regret the most are uh, relationship tied, other people, right? I mean, either opportunities that I, uh, that I missed, um, or things that happened uh, that I didn't want to happen, or things that I wanted to happen that didn't happen. And inside interpersonal relationships, things that I wish I hadn't said, things that I wish I had said, that's where my biggest regrets are. Not, I gave that painting to a friend in Seattle when I was leaving Seattle, and I really wish it was hanging on my wall. In the scheme of things, do I wish I had the piece of artwork? Okay, maybe, but not more than these other things that involve humans and relationships and experiences. So as you look back through your life and you think about the things that you do regret, and then you think about the things that you might regret, where does the might regret slot in on the scale of zero to 10, zero being things you don't regret at all and 10 being the things you regret the most, where, where could those things be, right? Like if you don't have that book anymore or you don't have that sweater anymore or you don't have that CD anymore, or you don't have that greeting card anymore, where's it going to fall? Because I think in the vacuum of our own thinking, it's very easy to feel like I'm going to regret this a lot. And so I'm, then you become frozen. You, you get stuck in being able to take action because this future regret that hasn't happened yet, uh, you want to avoid that. So if we can poke a hole in that logic, which is really more about emotion than logic and think about it in terms of, of all of the things that have happened or not happened in my life, of all of the things that I do actually regret, how likely is this to be bigger than any of them? Because I think that if you can think about it objectively, relatively objectively, and, and compare it to things that you actually do regret, it will, dismantle some of the stickiness and some of the tether to holding on to things based on a story rather than actual regret. Um, I've used that word a lot. <laughs> but I think that that's, that's what I want us to consider. 
Because if what you want is to set yourself free, if what you want is liberation, how much credence or influence or significance do you want to give a possible undefined fear in making your choices, right? If we think about every day being the only day that we have agency, and if we think about every day as being the only day where we have choice to shape our own lives, if we stay in the moment, do you have a regret right now about any of these things, right? If, if all of it went away, would the quality of your life be drastically diminished? Yes or no? And it is a yes or no question. So you get to ask yourself that. For me, right, I just, I, I'm just, I mean, I realize this is frozen in time in some ways because I've recorded it. I just came back from four plus months living on the road in Southeast Asia, doing volunteer work and speaking and all of those things. And I lived out of a suitcase and I had five changes of, of underwear. I had three pairs of shorts. I had, you know, four shirts with me, probably five t-shirts, a pair of flip-flops and a pair of shoes, right? And one set of fancy clothes for when I was speaking to professional people and needed to have trousers and a sport coat and a, you know, a button down shirt. So, um, uh, and I have plenty of things in my apartment in Florida and I didn't need any of them. I didn't miss any of them. I had my computer. I was able to do my work. So, uh, so when we think about the deal breakers, when we think about what we must have, really must have to be able to participate in our lives in the way we want to, it's, it becomes easier to examine these items and dismantle the story and the, the potential regret that we might feel and recognize if I'm healthy, if I'm uh, relatively comfortable, right? Food, clothing, and shelter are taken care of. If I have meaningful relationships, if I have uh, work that satisfies and is of use in the world in some way, um, does the other stuff really, really matter? Am I going to regret it? In my experience, the answer to, for me has been no. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's not little burrs or little sticky things of like, oh, I remember that thing. But its presence in my life or its absence from my life doesn't... Uh, the value in my life and the meaning in my life doesn't come from those objects. It comes from the experiences and the relationships. And while you don't have to live your life in the way that I live my life, um, if you want a degree of freedom and mobility, whatever again that means to you, that's the invitation to examine these choices so that you can, again, dismantle the snaggy parts of Future fear, as bell hooks said, 90% of the things we worry about never happen. So if you think about what you could be doing in any given day, how light your life could be, how free you could be to participate in the relationships and, and the experiences that you say are of value and aligned with your values, and you look around your home or your office or any space and you see these objects and they are in essence blocking you from that mobility, could you let them go? And could you risk their absence and what that may or may not mean for you, right? Glass half empty, glass half full. The glass half empty is you'll be missing these objects. The glass half full is, you may miss the objects, but you've exchanged the relationship with an inanimate object for a relationship with yourself and other people. So, I mean, you get to decide. And I think that that 
is where the question is more actively alive for us. So something to think about. <laughs> That's it for today. Looking forward to be back in with you again. Take good care of yourself if you can take care of somebody else. And always remember more love, less stuff. <laughs>